A good weekend in Madison. Uh, the scores were uh, a little lopsided in the wrong way for us, but I, I really felt like on, on Friday in particular, we competed, we worked hard. Uh, Saturday got away from us a little bit. And when you look at the uh, the talent in the roster that, that Wisconsin has, uh, you can see that we're still on our way towards um, being a top team in the WCHA, but we're not quite there yet. Um, I was really proud of, of the way our players handled things and played and, and still competed. And uh, so we're looking for, for takeaways from the weekend and what we can learn uh, as a program uh, as we get ready for Franklin Pierce here at home starting on Friday afternoon. So we can open it up to questions. Joel, it's, it's still obviously very early in the season, but if you had you know a, a project or two that you saw this weekend that you want to work on this week, what would it be? Uh, you know, one of the big pieces, I think we gave the puck away a lot. Uh, we had possession, we had chances to, to skate it and we decided to pass it. We had chances to dump the puck intelligently and we just threw it into the zone. So I think that that idea of possession, even when you have to give up the puck temporarily is one of the themes this week is to say, let's find a way to keep pressure on the puck or keep possession of the puck uh, because we found ourselves chasing quite a bit uh, against Wisconsin partly because of their skill and, and ability, but also partly because we just uh, ended up throwing it to them. And whether that's a bad play on the breakout uh, or a bad dump in or, you know, a hope pass, if you will, I think that's one of the areas we can really clean up and that's going to be a focus for us this week. He gave, uh, he gave the average fan $50 and asked him where Franklin Pierce is. I, I, I think you would keep your money. Uh, just tell us a little bit about what you know about that. Yeah, I, I think they're a, a sneaky opponent, um, you know, that, that people don't know a whole lot about. But if, if you look, if you take a second, uh, thankfully, we have uh, Google or as I call it, the Google. Uh, if, you, if you look up a little online, you realize that they're a team that's, that's uh, slowly building um, in the same way that we are. Uh, towards being a really competitive Division One hockey uh, team and, and program. And so, um, you know, it was a great opponent for us to schedule because I feel like we're in a similar spot. Um, they've had some, they've, they're, they're a little bit of ahead of us on, on, in some ways, but I think they're, uh, when I look at their scores against a lot of the, the Eastern teams, they play in a different conference. Nobody knows what the new high is. Uh, but when, when you see them play against teams like Boston College or Maine or New Hampshire or whatever, and you see the results that they have, not only this season, they, they don't have a whole lot on the on the on the video yet. But um, but last season, it gives us, a, you know, a, some some concern to say, OK, this is going to be a really good uh, challenge for us. So, um, yeah, it, it should be a good good weekend series for us. Uh, I love playing non-conference games early um, just because it gives us a chance to, to try to get better and sort things out. And so Franklin Pierce should be a good opponent for us. Further questions from anybody? You're obviously, uh, you know, early in the season, you know, a lot of, uh, lot of new players getting kind of worked into the system. Who, uh, who stood out to you among the, among the newbies? Well, I, I think the first, uh, you know, I'll, I'll just bring up two names, uh, you know, Maggie Mileka, who is a freshman goaltender, stepped into a, a really tough environment in the third period um, after our goaltenders, uh, Saskia played, you know, game one and, and then uh, Dobbs played in game two. And, and, you know, Maggie comes in in the third period in a pretty tough environment in Madison and, and really, I thought, um, performed well under pressure and, and was not afraid of the moment. Uh, so I was really excited to see her do that. I, I think Haley Maxwell on the back end on the blue line, um, you know, logged a lot of minutes for us and played in some special team situations, both power play, penalty kill. And, and uh, so I was really impressed. Um, you know, I, I told our freshmen after the game, um, all of them, even the ones that, uh, that weren't able to, to play in both games or, or weren't, weren't able to travel, you know, that was a, a pretty big dive into the deep end of the pool. Uh, to, you know, when you, when you go on the road to, to Madison and they've already played four games and they're three and one with a, with a, you know, sting loss to, to Penn state. So, so they were ready to go. And that was our first real competition. I know we had some exhibition games, but, but they were, uh, they were certainly four games into the season and ready to go. And that was our first, that's no excuse for not competing, not, not working hard. And, and that's one of the things that we've talked about, but overall, I, I thought our freshmen handled, um, uh, like I said, a, a really tough first series um, with, uh, with a great deal of, you know, uh, 
I, I just thought they worked hard. They did what they could. They, they, they tried things that worked. And sometimes they tried things that I'm sure they would tell you, wow, this is a fast, faster pace than I'm used to. This is a little bit different, different style of hockey. And so, so we look forward to using those opportunities. And this is what we talked about just after the game with not only our freshmen, but our whole team. Now we got to learn and, and be better for, for this weekend. Get a chance to play at home. And it seems to me that's part of the process too, that you've got to learn how to, you know, really take advantage of home ice. So is that something that you're gonna gonna as the year goes on, especially hope that you guys can can use that and yeah. be a be a yeah, there's a couple different aspects. Obviously, you like a home crowd and, and you like uh you know the more people in the in the building to to cheer on and support our team, the better. And, and then there's also just the comfort of of you know sleeping in your own bed at night and not traveling and, and having a little more predictable schedule. And so so I do I do think playing at home, you know, we've got a, a you know a couple opportunities here in the next few weeks to play at home and and I I, I do think it makes a difference uh for us. Uh you know, we we we're still figuring out, you know, our lineup and, and how everything comes together on a week to week basis, but there's no, there's no uh, discussing the, the, the fact that a plan at home is a positive. And we look forward to not only our fans being able to support us, parents and friends and, and family, uh, but just, just the opportunity to, to be at our home rink and, and have familiar uh, settings is uh, certainly a plus. Final question or comments. Um, Joel, is uh, <clears throat> playing an unfamiliar team after playing a familiar team, does that offer like a unique challenge to your team this early in the season? Yeah, Ryan, I think it does offer a, a, a unique challenge because we just don't know a whole lot about them. As, as Jess mentioned earlier, nobody can even tell you what state they play in, let alone what city. And and uh, I think I think the, the thing we're looking forward to is learning a little bit on video. We have a couple games to scout. Um, but it also pr provides us an opportunity to say it's not as much about them as it is about us. And that's a, that's a, I don't know, <laughs> every coach says that, but, uh, but it, there's truth to it. And so I think our focus this week is going to be far less on Franklin Pierce and far more on what we can learn from how we played against Wisconsin, because the bottom line is this, if we go to Madison and learn from that we feel pretty good about how that applies to whoever our next opponent is um because we we know playing in wcha each week um it, it provides a really tough test so we're confident that if we can learn some things and get better we'll be in great shape uh, and we're excited because when somebody comes into your building who's never been here um and a, a non-conference opponent uh, there's there's just some excitement around that uh, to not see this the familiar faces. Not that I don't like anybody in the WCHA, but but it's nice to not see their their faces on the bench or across the blue line every weekend. Any further questions, Ryan? For anybody? Awesome. Uh, oh yeah, I got one. Um, coach, you know, playing at Lebon for the first time. That's going to become, if it hasn't already become, a, a women's hockey mecca, one of the few women's only facilities in the country. Um, did it feel different for you? And maybe if you talk about the team, did it just feel different playing in, a, in an environment like that? Yeah, you know, I, I can't speak for our team because they didn't get the chance to play there last year due to some COVID um, situations. But uh, for me, it didn't feel any different. Um, you know, I've been there a number of times it is one of the, the the coolest places to to play just because of the tradition and the history of of women's hockey there. Um, I think it 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 sets a standard for for what we should expect out of every school that sponsors you know Division One women's ice hockey. Uh, the fan and engagement, the involvement, the attendance. Um, you know, I, I give their their program a lot of credit for building it in that way, and that's something that we're looking forward to do here at St. Thomas as time goes.